that is raised up against him. And he is worthy. Come on, don't sit back on God. God delights in the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for another opportunity to walk into your house. We were able to walk into your house unassisted, God. Lord, we thank you that we can breathe on our own today. God, we thank you that we are in our right mind, that we have everything that we need, oh God. God, you, you load us daily with benefits that we are so undeserving of. But God, we come together in one mind and in one accord. And God, we push out every attack of the enemy. We push out everything and every thought that will try to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. And God, we focus on you. God, we're hungry for you. God, we need you today. God, we We don't want to leave here like we came. And God, only you can change us. Only you can change our circumstance. Only you, God, are our source. And God, I ask, Lord, that it not be me. But God, let everything that comes out of my mouth be of you. God, let everything that you have spoken to me come out and pierce our hearts. God, let it awaken. Let it breathe life into our spirits and our souls. Let it breathe upon our hearts and minds, God. Let it shake us to our very core until, God, we fall to our knees in repentance. God, we want to be better. We've got to be better in you. And, God, we've got to have more of you. Now, God, I ask that you keep your protecting angels around the seat of this word. Because Satan does not want this word to get out. Satan does not want this word. He does not want the seed. But God, you sit on high and your will is going to be done. Amen. And God, I ask that you protect the seed of the word. God, that you cover it, you protect it, you stand guard. And Lord, that the enemy will not steal it. He will not destroy it. But, God, that you would water it and multiply it. And, Lord, while you're at it, give us a Holy Ghost boldness in our mouths. Lord, that we would, before we know it, God, we would be speaking the very oracles of you, the very oracles of the Word of God. Lord, to every man that comes upon us, that every situation, God, that your Word would rise up like a two-edged sword coming out of our mouth, cutting everything and every attack of sudden. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you that this message may not be a popular one, but it is the truth of the Word of God. The Word of God is for reproof, correction, rebuke. And when I say this, I said, God, are you sure you want me to deliver this word? He said, obey. And I said, okay, God. Because, see, the words that we speak up here is not just for you. It's for us, too. So when I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh Lord, you are so good. Second Timothy chapter 3. And in verse 1 it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. How many believe we're living in perilous times? We're living in difficult times. We're living in fierce times. And he said, the last days, perilous times shall come. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, 
proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Disobedience to parents. I've never seen such disrespect for the parents and, and the mothers and fathers of this world. But I don't blame the kids so much. I blame the parents. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. I think we need to get back to the basics. This is not a, a, a teaching this morning uh, about discipline or spanking your children. You work out your own soul salvation in your own house. But here we are, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such... Turn away. You may say, I've got family members that I love so dearly. All you can do, you're not God to them. All you can do is love them. But if they fit any of this, whether they're family, friends, co-workers, strangers off the street, it, it could be pastors, church members, whatever it is. If there's anyone that fits this bill, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There are churches, I've said it time and time again, that just because your entity is labeled a church does not mean that you are a church representative of God. There are wolves in sheep's clothing that is ordained and orchestrated by Satan himself to lure in the sheep, to distract them, to destroy them. Hear me this day. I'm trying to tell you we are living in perilous times. And there are men who are lovers of their own selves. You want to know how I know that? They think they don't need God. They think that there's, no, there's nobody that can tell me how to live my life. Well, you go ahead and you think that because one day you're going to stand before the throne of God and you're going you're gonna to try to tell him all of these, these excuses. I didn't know. Yeah, you did. Don't try to lie to God to his face. You knew. You knew. You had plenty of time. God will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Men will be lovers of their own selves. Covetousness. I've never seen, I don't know exactly what the stats of robbery are, but they, I believe they are at an all-time high. Why? Because people are not content with what they have. They're not content. They don't recognize the blessings of God that's right there Amen. in their hands. They want something that their neighbor has, and they will stop at nothing to get it. And even once they get it, if you were to ask robbers and all these different people who commit theft, did you get what you want? Are you happy? If they're really honest, they will say no. They're not happy. Because only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. It says boasters, proud. You know, we think of people that are being proud. I'm too proud to accept help. I'm too proud to come to church. I'm too proud to do this. Pride does not just fall on the world. Pride falls in the church house too. When you think that you're too proud to be to need prayer, when you think that you're too proud to kneel down at these altars, I'm speaking truth this morning. And if you get mad at me, take it up with him. The, the people in the church, and I'm not just saying this church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Yes. They've gotten too prideful. Oh, altars are a thing of yesterday. No, we need them now more than ever. If we ever needed to get back to the foot of the cross, today is that day. Yes. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. I heard a story where 
a young man was preaching the gospel and had it reading from the Bible, and there was mockers all around him. And they were beating in his ear on a tin, some kind of tin object to drown him out. And finally they just took his Bible, ripped it to shreds, and some of them even ate the pages of the Bible right in front of him. If you're going to blaspheme anything, it better not be the Holy Spirit. God help your soul if you blaspheme and mock the spirit of the living God. Disobedient to parents. You know, God, when he created the heavens and the earth, he had an, a, an architecture. He had a structure. Children, all those that children use the day that you think you know better than your parents, go out and live on your own. I didn't get a whole lot of amens about that. Amen. I'm just preaching truth. You don't realize how good you have it in your father's house. You don't realize how good you have it in your mother's house. But the day that you think you know better than your mom and dad, step out into reality. Step out into the real world. And you will quickly see you don't know everything that you thought you knew. That's why God gave you parents to lead you. That should lead you to guide you as a shepherd does the sheep. Unthankful, unholy, coming into the sanctuaries with donuts, Happy Meals, coffee, like this is just some nightclub. No, this is holy ground. This is a holy sanctuary of the Lord most high. You want to respect the Lord? You want God to release the blessings and miracles in his hands? You treat him holy. You treat his sanctuary holy. Don't you come in here disrespecting the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may say you sound angry. I'm angry at the spirit of deception. That's what I'm targeting. I'm, I'm targeting. I'm done with trying to fight through the mess. I, I see you now, Satan. I see you. You are trying to deceive the body of Christ. But I'm here to, to wage war on you today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection. You know what natural affection is? When you see something in your heart melts. I don't know of anybody that's not evil. That can look at a newborn baby and not have natural affection. But that's why abortion is so high. The natural affection is gone from life. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. Truth breakers. Back years ago, a man's word meant something. Amen. You knew that if you said, you got my word, right. you knew it was as good as done. Yeah. And now, people will lie to you, deceive you, manipulate you, and look at you in the eye and not blink twice. Yeah. There's a heart problem that's going on in the world today. They're breaking their truths. They're false accusers. Accusers of the brethren. Yes, yes. Satan is one of those. Yes. The accuser of the brethren. Yes. Why are we busy fighting Satan when the accusers of the brethren are in the household of faith? Yes. We're talking about the world. We need, to, we need to confront the spirit of accusation in the church house. Don't judge one another, but love one another. Wasn't one of the Ten Commandments? Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. <coughs> you will find that people that will lie to you and tell lies on the character of other people are really hiding something of themselves. Yeah. Incontinent. Now, I don't know what the Bible meant here, but 
but I can tell you in the natural sense, incontinence is really a term, and I'll keep this G-rated, uh, incontinence is a term that's used when you can't hold liquid, when you can't hold water. So in my mind, that means gossipers. You can't hold nothing in until you're finding somebody that can say, hey, did you know what sister so-and-so did? Do you know what brother so-and-so did? Do you know how they're living? Did you see what they had on? Be careful what you speak to your neighbor. Because not everybody... They may be your neighbor, but they're not your brother or sister. Fierce despisers of those that are good. You ever walk into a room or being at work or in a place and you, you really didn't know this person, but they just don't like you. And they don't even know why. They just something about them. Just don't like you. Because they're despisers of those that are good. It's not you that they don't like. It's the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you that gets them all twisted, turned upside down. It is that Holy Spirit that's good for reproof and correction and rebuke. And that Holy Spirit, when you walk into the room, that Holy Spirit is doing something on them that they don't like. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Oh, that's a message in itself. That's why we say, God, we sang it this morning. Come rest on us. God, come rest on us. If you interrupt the whole service, come rest on us. Yeah. If you just come and, and do and take away the message, rest on us. Yeah. God, if you want to come in and just turn everything upside down to where all we're doing is laid out on the floor and at the altar seeking and weeping and crying yeah. uh, after you and the things of you, do it. Come rest on us. Yeah. Because, see, I don't want to have just a form of godliness. I want to have and operate in the power of godliness. Amen. <laughs> the Passion Translation of the Scriptures I just read says it like this. But you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. People will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. You know, the Bible says that the love of money, there's nothing wrong with money. The love of money is the root of all evil, but money does answer all things. When you're obsessed with money instead of being obsessed with God, that's bad. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride. You know anyone who's arrogant? I'm going to tell you something. One of, the, one of the characteristics that I loathe is arrogance. Yeah, we know quite a few of them. Arrogance will get you nowhere but face down in the ground. Because pride comes before fall. The haughty will fall. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. That's why good news travels fast. It's addicted. It's an addicting to hateful and malicious slander. And especially of those of the household of faith. Why do you think that if, if anybody in the church or in the body of Christ, anybody who is a, in the pulpit, anybody who, who is a shepherd, if they mess up, the whole world's going to know about it. Why? Because the news media, bad news sales, they are addicted to hateful and malicious slander. 
slave to their desires. They will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint. Bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of loving God. They will find delight. They will find delight. Okay, God, I'm going to say it. They will find delight in the pleasures of this world. They will find delight in ball games on Sunday mornings. They'll find delight in the comfort of their bed. They'll find delight in doing everything, family reunions, picnics, everything else on Sunday when it's the Lord's Day. They will be lovers and find delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of the loving God. They'll find delight in sitting at home watching church online. If I get hate mail, mwah, I love you. But take it up with him. This is his word, not mine. They'll find delight in everything else. But when all hell breaks loose, they blame the one that they rejected. They blame the one that if they had just been diligent in well-doing, if they had just been faithful to the one who is faithful to us, when storms come, we sang it this morning, when storms come and the winds blow, we will remain steadfast. Why? Because of the cross. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. They may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. Stay away from people like this. You say, well, the Bible says we should love everybody. Loving doesn't mean you got to rub elbows with them everywhere you go. You can love from afar. Love has a distance. Love has a line. You can love, but you can also keep your distance. Otherwise, the Bible wouldn't say stay away from them. It's just like that saying, you lay down with dogs, guess what? You're going to wake up with fleas. If you are around these people, they will rub off on you. And not only you, their spirit inside of them, their deceptive spirit, the one that has deceived them will eventually deceive you too. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Why? Because we know that we need God more today than yesterday. We know that we are living in perilous times. And now is not the time to reject God. Now is not the time to turn your back on God. Because one of these days, if it hasn't happened already, you're going to need him. You're going to need him. <laughs> and if he didn't move, guess who moved? We did. Second Timothy chapter 4. Well, let me back up in chapter 3. Paul was, was preparing Timothy. He said in verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Not only are these people deceiving you, they're deceived already. They're deceived themselves. It says in verse 14, but, someone say, but, but. continue thou in the things which thou hast heard and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Even in perilous times, even when it looks like, well, everywhere I go, people are rude, they're inconsiderate, they're unthankful, they're ungrateful. These kids are raising their parents. These, these people are, 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 are just an incontent. They're, they're jealous. They're backbiters. It looks like humanity is going to hell in a handbasket. But continue what you know. Paul said, in the midst of hell, continue what you know that God has enlightened you with. Yes. 
In chapter 4, verse 2, it says, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Don't preach the word when it feels good only. Don't preach the word when you've got a well-built platform. Don't just preach the word when you've got a body of believers that are standing behind you. Preach the word when it's difficult. Preach the word when it don't sound like anybody's listening. Preach the word when you're on your back porch. Preach the word when you're waiting at the bus stop. Preach the word when you're filling up your gas tank. Preach the word when you're standing in line at the grocery store. Preach the word everywhere that you go. Good, bad, or indifferent, preach that word. Because it's the word of God. It's the truth. It said, doesn't the Bible say, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free? How are people in bondage that are being deceived going to be made free unless they know the truth? It says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Did you hear me? Reprove, rebuke, rebuke. Well, if it feels good, do it. We don't need, we don't need to live by old culture. We can be led by new culture. You know, we, we need to, if you can be anything, be kind. Just be kind. Just be acceptive. Just roll with it. Just do. Just don't make any noise. Just, just what they're what they're really saying is just sit there and shut up and, and grin. Just go along with it. Don't make any waves. Don't. That's, that's right. not what the Bible says. It says rebuke. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Say you're wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. There are ministers who call themselves ordained of God that believe wholeheartedly, my body, my choice. Let me tell you something. It was never our body. He's the one that created it. He's the one that brings life into it. It's not ours. It is his. If you're for abortion, I'm sorry. Here's the altars. You take it up with God. It's his word, not mine. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Teach the word. Teach it in truth. Yes. Teach it when it steps on toes. Yes. Teach it when it affects the offering plate. Yes. 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 You know what? I said it Wednesday night. I love that you give. You should want to give because in, it's in the Bible it says, I will bless you. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that yes. there will not be room enough yes. to contain it. Yes. Amen. But at the same time, if you say, I don't want to hear anything derogatory about my lifestyle, I don't want to hear anything that is against my beliefs, or I will withhold my tithes and offering by right. my love you. This is the church of truth. You don't like it? Change. That's what we're wanting. That's our goal. Change. Change. I gotta change. He's gotta change. You've gotta change. We're to be wholly acceptable. And many, many ministries have got it all wrong. They want to just 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 make them feel good. If, if, if we're if we're preaching what they want to hear, if we preach just what they want to hear, they'll continue giving that money. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That money that you drop in the bucket ain't worth a dime in the in the presence of God. It ain't worth anything in heaven. I want to not just squeeze by. I want to come running in where the gates of heaven will swing wide and say, here comes that well done and good and faithful servant. She's running with everything that she's got. 
For the time will come, the time is here. They will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is truthful doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. They, they're searching after somebody who will say what they want to say. Let me just tell those that are that may be listening, and I don't know, the Lord help me, but this is, I know this is going out to the world. Thank you, God. But those that have ministries, those that call yourself a minister of God, if you're not preaching the truth, sit down. If you're not, if you don't allow God to move freely, if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, if you don't believe that Jesus died on the cross, if you are being led by the people in your congregation, sit down. We're not here to babysit you. We're not here to rock you to sleep. If anything, we're here to shake you and stir you up and say, get right with your heart. Get right in your household. Get right in your family. Because the time is drawing near that Jesus is looking for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I don't want him finding me with wrinkles and spots and blemishes all because I wanted to feel good. Saul pleased the people before he kept the word. And look what happened to him. God took his anointing away from him. David said, take not thy presence away from me, O God. Because David valued the presence of God. Where is the value of the presence of God? Where is the value? You know why I believe we have such small churches? Because if the truth is really being preached, if the truth is 100% being preached and the Holy Spirit is operating and allowed, well, you know, we're not running this show. The Holy Spirit is. And if anybody else is running your service, shame on you. It's just a gathering. It's not a service. It, is, it should be God-led, Holy Spirit infilled, induced, infused, and anything else. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned into fables. Yes. Yes. They're going to be turned away. Do you know anyone like that? The Passion Translation says, preaching the full expression of the Holy Spirit. In the full expression of the Holy Spirit, with wisdom and patience, as you instruct and teach the people. For the time is coming when they will no longer listen and respond to the healing words of truth. The healing words of truth. See, the, what people don't understand is they're sick in their bodies. They're sick in their spirit. They're sick in their heart. They don't even know it. They're sick in their mind. And the only thing that's going to heal them, the healing words of truth. Because they will become selfish and proud. They will seek out teachers with soothing words. That line up with their desires. I'm going to tell you something. We made a vow unto God that's more important than the desires of man. And because we say, God, we love people. But we love you more. We place value on your word and the truth of your word. And God, we know that's not going to be popular with everybody. We know that we're going to step on toes. We're even going to step on our own toes. It's going the word is going to correct us. It's going to do things. It's going to review us. And that's okay because we desire to become better in you. We don't want to be the same. We don't want to be sugar coated. But one thing we will say. We will not sugarcoat Amen. your sin. Amen. We won't sugarcoat your sin. Grace, I've heard it say it like this. Grace delivers from sin. It doesn't embrace it. You don't use grace as an outlet for your sin. It doesn't give you a pass to sin. I know this is, I know this is uh, 
sinful and it's wrong, but I'm still going to do it because it feels good. God's got grace and, and grace is good every day. I'll just repent tomorrow for it. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. Where is the sound doctrine? Matthew 7 and 15 says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I'm going to tell you, When we started this ministry, we said, God, whatever you give us to preach, we'll preach. If we know that you've given us, it's inspired of you. God, we know that you will give us the strength, the power, and authority to deliver that message. Just as you have instructed. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. But God, we, we've got to do it in a way. And you got to help us with this. you got to do it in a way that the, the people will know. They stepped on my toes, but they did it because they love me. Yes. Not because they're angry with me, but because they love me. Yes. I will tell you, we love each and every one. We love each other. But as my pastor, I expect him to rebuke me when I'm wrong. And guess what? I have. I may not like it. <laughs> but if my desire for God is greater than my ego, I heard it say like this. And I think it uh, was used in the military as a leadership term. Mission over ego. The mission that we should have as the body of Christ should always supersede our ego. If you get corrected with the word of God, then let it correct you. Don't take offense to it. There's been such a, a spirit of offense in the world today that they don't want to hear anything because they get offended. You won't be more offended when you see that your name is not written in that book of life. You want to be offended? Be offended. Be offended. Turn from your wicked ways. Get down on your knees. Throw your hands up and surrender and say, God, forgive me. God, I'm sorry. God, change me from the inside out. I don't want to be lovers of myself. I don't want to be the way that I am. But God, I want to be more like you. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to walk every day closer to the cross. I want to know that my walk in life is heavenly and not on a fast track to hell. It says, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing. Just because somebody says, thus saith the Lord, does not mean that God put his stamp of approval on them. Beware of false prophets. And anyone that, that you fall in that category, your time is short. Your time is running out. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. The Bible says, and not everybody who cries, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, throw it out. Yeah. If it doesn't line up, if, if somebody says, you know what, I, I, I've got something that God, God said to tell you this. I'm going to tell you something. You better have a walk with God and is holy and humble and righteous before you speak on God's behalf. Amen. Amen. Don't throw around God said so loosely. Yes. Because you're speaking for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. That shouldn't be taken lightly. Amen. Amen. If it doesn't line up, see, God won't go against his word. If God says... Don't get if God says homosexuality is an abomination, well, we accept the homosexual community. It goes against the word of God. Sit your lying self down. 
You're not doing anybody any good. You or them. The Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination yeah. unto God. Yeah. If God burned down Sodom and Gomorrah, he will burn down everything that's homosexual related. Not having natural affection. Those that believe in abortion, shame on you. Shame on you. My dad used to tell me, and again, I'm going to keep this G-rated. If you want to dance, you've got to pay the band. You don't want that scare? Don't do the act. Your bed should be undefiled. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's what the Bible says. Yes, Lord. Your bed should be undefiled. Yes, Lord. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Ooh. Be careful who you listen to and what you listen to. I told you this was not going to be popular, but it is the very core truth. It's breaking through some things yeah. that we've, we've yeah. sugarcoated way too long. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't want to stand before God and say you didn't fully. Fully tell my sheep the truth. I want to say, God, I did everything that you told me to do, even when it was hard. And you know what? I love you for it. That's why I'm telling you. I, I love myself because you said that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And it was Satan that came in and corrupted everything. And now he's corrupting the platforms. He's corrupting the churches. He's corrupting our belief system. He's corrupting our homes. He's corrupting our beds. He's corrupting our government. He's made corruption out of everything. When is somebody going to have the backbone to stand up and say the truth of God? Philippians 2 and 10 says that at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. See, there's something about that name. There's something about that name. There's something about that name. There is something about that name. I was having a procedure done this week. And I was in my mind, I was like, God, I do not want to have this done. I do not want to have this done. Because I know what it felt like before. I do not want to have this done. But this time, I don't care how silly I sound. I don't care how silly I look. I'm going to speak Jesus. I'm going to speak Jesus over it. I'm going to speak Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Those that are boasting, those that are, are covetousness, those that are jealous, those that are fault finders, those that are mockers, those that are blasphemers, every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. No wonder the Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. Yes. Judgment begins. The, 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 the body of Christ, the church house, is looking more like a nightclub than it is a, a place of, of a hospital for the sick and a deliverance for those that are bound and addicted. It should not look like the world. It shouldn't even sound like the world. But when you, when you put the Holy Spirit at the forefront... If you stay the same, something's wrong. Something's wrong. People say, I don't want to change. Well, then keep living in your uncontent self. 
looking for everything, every sound of doctrine, every wind that comes by, you'll be like a leaf. The Bible says every wind of doctrine will carry you away. You'll believe anything and everything but the truth. And you'll wonder, why is it not working for me? Why is it that I can't find happiness? Why is it that I can't get healed? Why is it that I feel so bound? Because you're missing one main ingredient. Alcohol can't do it. Drugs can't do it. Money can't do it. False gods can't do it. Government can't do it. Stimulus checks can't do it. All the health and welfare can't do it. All the, the laziness can't do it. Anything and everything that the world is trying to put above God won't suffice. But when you put Jesus first, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I will add these things to you. He said, preach the word. You know, you don't have to be in the pulpit to preach the word. Many people think, well, I'm not ordained. Where does it say that you have to be ordained? Jesus told the disciples, go and preach the gospel and make disciples out of men. Don't give me that excuse that, that I'm not a preacher. Yeah, you are. God created you to preach and carry the word. I'll ask you, how many people have you talked to God about? How many people have you led to the Lord? I'm not looking because I don't want... I, I don't... I, it, that's not up for me. That's between you and God. How many people did you pray for? How many people did you lead to God? How many people did you testify? Because, see, God just didn't carry you through that trial just to keep it bottled up within you. God carried you through the fires of hell just so you could come out shining as pure gold and go to somebody and say, Look, sister, let me tell you something. I've walked the very fires that you're walking through, and God is faithful to bring you out. God is righteous. God is a healer, and what he started, he's going to be faithful to complete it. How many of us have done that? See, the world doesn't know about the Holy Spirit because we've tightened up our lips. We've shut up because that's what Satan wanted. The government wants us to, to shut up our lips. He, we can preach about love and kindness and, and tolerance. You need to tolerate your brother and sister. You No, you need to love them. That's what the Bible says. Love them and pray for them. But it also says rebuke them, exhort them, reprove them with sound doctrine. We have such a long way to go. You know, the time is getting shorter. That's why I say, God, if they get mad with me, that's okay. You'll take care of me. But God, I've dropped that seed in their heart. And God, I hope that that seed will blossom. It will correct. It will rebuke. It will exhort. It will do everything, God, that your word says it would do. All to make them better. I can't make you better. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But what I have done today, I have dropped the word of truth into your spirits that it might make you better. And I'll just say this just for good measure. Be careful who you sit up under. Be careful who you... Be careful where you go to church. Yeah. I've had many an invitation. Oh, I'd love for you to come to church for me. I'd love you to come to church for me. I'm very selective in who I listen to. Because if you don't mention the Holy Spirit, if you don't operate in the Holy Spirit, 
and you don't mention Jesus, you're saying all the good things, you're saying all the right things, but you're leaving out the most important thing that's life changing. I don't want to hear you because it's just noise. That's right. You just noise. You may say, why? Why? What happened to the, the spirit moving? And that's running around and jumping and speaking in tongues and falling out of the floor. All that's good. But you got to know why you're doing it. You got to know why you're jumping. Because see, without the grace of God, he, he plucked me out of hell. And not only did he pluck me out of hell, he set my feet up on a rock. And he said, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to walk with you in the fires of life. I'm weaving when you don't know where to go. I, you're you're going to be able to bless my name. We sung that this morning. David said in Psalm 24, <coughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. God said, I'm going to give you the strength to bless my name at all times. Even when it doesn't make sense. Even when you're all by yourself. Even when you're crying your eyes. Out. Even when it doesn't look like there's any hope left, you will be able to bless my name. We need truth. We need a reminding that we do not need to act like the world. We don't look like the world. We don't need to talk like the world. We don't want to shame the cross for what he did. That you might as well go up and smack Jesus in the face to call yourself a Christian. For me to call myself a Christian and, and put to shame what he did by acting like the world. God said, I called you out. I separated you. You're, you're, you're a peculiar people. You don't talk like they talk. You don't walk like they walk. You don't interact. You, you, you are to turn away from the world. Yes. Yes. See, some ministries even think you can live like hell Monday through Saturday, but on Sunday, that's your religious day. Yeah. I am about religion. I'm about the truth of the Word of yeah. God. And if the Holy Spirit only resides in you on Sunday morning, there's something wrong. Yeah. If it doesn't correct you Monday through Saturday too, oh. something's wrong. Shall I play? Let it rain. We're going to pray. And we're going to open these altars.